everybody, we're back. <laughs> Let's see if this works. We just built an entire uh, satellite dish in the backyard to try to do this. So yeah, uh, it took us a little while. Used a bunch of, bunch of logs <laughs> out of an old dog. wooden log, yeah, and a Wrigley's gum wrapper. Some scrap pieces of leather that we had lying around. We are having some horrible uh, uh, uploading issues with our internet, but uh, hopefully we get everything rebooted. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to play this right from the top. So welcome. Hope you guys had a great week. Um, we're 45 minutes late, but what the heck? Better late than never. Um, uh, I want to let you know we've got a, a, a sale going on this week over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. we got 50% off of all of our digital painting courses. So my Introduction to Digital Painting in Photoshop, and then also Procreate, uh, my uh, Procreate course. Uh, both of those are 50% off right now over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. So if you're interested in digital painting, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today, then go on over there and check it out because I take you through everything I know uh, which is still just a small percentage of what's available on there on Photoshop or Procreate. Um, what, what re what's really cool is I'll take you through it, and then you can go off and you know go from there and make it your own. So yeah, and, and, and it, it really out. does. Even though they are digital painting classes in those particular like Procreate and Photoshop, they really do apply. The way you approach digital painting applies to pretty much any piece of software. Painter, it does. Like studio Paint. It's not about how to use that particular software. It's about how to do yeah, yeah. digital painting, which is... I agree cool. with you. I agree with you on that on that point. But uh, do you want to recap <laughs> what it is that you're drawing real quick? As you yes. Talk? So uh, this past week, I've been going through boxes, and uh, we found a lot of stuff from different films that I've worked on in the past. You know, I was with Disney for 21 years, all through the 90s into the 2000s and uh one of my favorite films i've worked on was mulan and we found a bunch of stuff from mulan i uh, i animated the ghosts uh in mulan and also yao uh one of the gang of three but i found some really fun developmental drawings of the ghosts of the main ancestor uh, along with some animation and so i thought today would be kind of fun to take one of those drawings uh one of those initial design drawings and do a painting of it and um and you know, just see where it goes. And so I just thought that would be fun. One of the things, uh, Chen Yi Chang, who was our lead character designer on the film, uh, one at one point he thought doing the uh, using Chinese opera masks as influence for the for the ghosts would be kind of cool. It didn't stick. We didn't end up using those in the final, but I thought it'd be fun to paint. And so that's what we're doing today. Um, if we ever get off the ground here, but I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I feel like we're good this time. The the reboot seems to have stuck. I'm feeling it. I'm when feeling in doubt, it. reboot everything. Yep. That's right. That's what Hollywood executives have been saying for years. <laughs> well, what do they know? How to make billions of dollars. <laughs> do they, though? Do they? It's really just a gamble. When you think about all the movies they actually put into production. True. You know, so, you put a bunch of monkeys in a room long enough, eventually they're going to write Shakespeare. That's what they say. Uh, in the production team for Mulan, um, do you remember who, who exactly it was that, um, changed, that decided to make the change from uh, the title uh, China Doll to Mulan? No, I don't. I, I'm, I'm, I know it was... <clears throat> it was a, a it was decision. A story change, right? So the, it wasn't just yeah. It, well, I think it was more than a story change. I think it was yeah. When it was called China Doll, it wasn't even about Mulan. It was yeah, China well, it, that did stick for a little while, but I can't remember. Like I said, if if um, yeah, I can't remember if it started out as Mulan though. That's the thing. Uh, what was it originally supposed to be about? Do you remember? No, I don't. That's the thing. I don't remember the original story. It may have always been based on Mulan. I can't. I don't know who brought it. I don't know who brought it to Disney. What we'll to see if we can get Barry or Tony on? Yeah. In a future stream, that'd be fun to ask them about. Or or uh, Pam Coates. Yeah, absolutely. Pam Coates uh, produced. And uh, actually, I'd love to get Pam Coates on. Let's see, a bit more of the late 30s redesign Mickey Mouse adding pupils in the eyes. And why was he assigned to the task? I have no idea why. He, well, he could draw, you know, he designed all the all the 
the uh, dwarfs, and he had this really fun, squishy way of drawing. Um, his characters were super, super appealing. Um, he also designed all the little, like, centaurettes, the little female centaurs, and oh, all those little characters from... from uh, Fantasia. Fantasia. Yeah, that was a... That's an absolute classic. You think? Oh, yes, I, I do think. <laughs> Trying to get this. I want to get this. This right here. Get that knuckle. That knuckle. The knuckle. Like that. And then this knuckle coming out here. Like that. Like, how far into the render do you think you're going to get, like, photo bashing? No, we're not going to photo bash today. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I, I, I just don't, don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. No, stop it. <laughs> I'm going to change the angle on that thumb as well. There's a, I'm going to do it more this way. More what way? That way? There we go. There, I like that fist a lot better. A much nicer fist. A nicer fist. It's a nicer fist. It is a nice fist. George Takei was the voice of the original main ancestor. Today's Takei. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I went and I met him. Um, I only got to go to one recording session with him, and I flew out, and we met. And I said, it's very nice to meet you, Mr. Takai. And he goes, actually, it's Takai. Rhymes with OK. I said, oh, sorry. I said, ooh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, was, he was awesome. He was really great. How many times did you get to meet him over the course of the production? Just the one time. I always oh, no. only I was only in one recording session with him. I only think I think he only did a couple. And then uh I did a recording I did one recording session with Harvey Firestein too. Harvey Firestein was freaking awesome. I love that guy. He gave Tony so much crap. <laughs> I could see that. He gave the directors crap in general. Uh from Jason Pickering, uh was there ever a design choice in character design uh, that as you started animating, you regretted? No. No, because, I mean, everything, by the time we get to animation, everything's pretty well thought out. I mean, there's there's some design choices that have been harder than others. Mulan was very hard because Mulan was a flat. I'm drawing this pretty dimensional right now, but it was originally a very flat kind of design conceit. And it was hard to, uh, you know, get that working right. Of the of Disney's nine old men, who did you meet? Uh, I met uh, Frank and Ollie Ward, uh, Ken Harris. Um, is that it? I think that's it. Uh, from Penny Taylor, uh, did we get all your uh, digital painting courses with the full membership? Yeah. With the full membership, you get everything. Everything. What is it about everything you don't understand? Everything. 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 Raw, raw. We need some fireworks for that. Yeah. Like monster trucks and Saturday night. Yeah, if you become an annual member to preach your art teacher... Uh, which, by the way, you can always buy courses a la carte, but the best deal is getting a membership because it does. It gets you everything on the site, all the brushes, everything we release for the next year, and uh, that's immediate yeah. access to over 500 hours of lessons. 500 hours of lessons. And growing. We're like Flintstones kids. 
Ten million strong and growing. And growing. Uh, from O'Neill. Uh, hello, Aaron. What's your favorite ghost movie? Um, I really liked, uh, was it The People Under the Stairs? Is that what it was? Was that the, the Cole Kidman one? Did you ever see that one? No. That movie is so good because it's it's such great storytelling. No, Nicole Kidman is the others. People under oh the others. That's people under the stairs. The old Wes Craven movie. Okay, no, the the it's the uh, the others. Yep. Man, I love that movie. It's it's probably the best ghost story I've ever seen. Man, my my uh, stylus is freaking out on me. It's, it's it keeps like skipping out. Huh. Like, Need a new nib. I think finally? I know. I think I, I changed it. I changed it out because I was having this problem. I think I need a a new stylus. Uh-oh. I've dropped it so many times. So this thing has lasted. Uh, in Kenya, did you see aardvarks at night and no. uh, penguins? No. I've never seen an aardvark and never seen a penguin. Are they in the Bosa? A penguin? Uh, penguins, I'm not sure. Uh, aardvarks, I think, are in the Maasai. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. But, you know, you're not going to see them. Uh, Gabby just had a quick visit. Gabby! Yeah, Gabster! Gabarino! Uh, YouTube question. Will there be a figure drawing course added to the website? Soon? Yes. Uh, I don't know about soon, but yes, I'm, I'm, I have plans on uh, adding one myself. It's been something I've been wanting to teach for a long time. Uh, who was Eric Larson? Why did he mentor the next generation of animators? Uh, he was one of the nine old men, and he just happened to be he stuck around. And so he was there to mentor. Mark Hen, who I, I worked with quite a bit on Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast... And the Lion King uh, was mentored by Eric Larson. And then Glenn Keane, who I worked with a lot on Beauty and the Beast, um, was mentored by Ollie Johnston. And if I'm not mistaken, Tim Hodge has an Eric Larson story where he wrote him a letter and he wrote back to him. It's a really good story. I'll tell it Tim. Tell it. How's our upload speeds? Everything's good? Everything seems Everything good. Everything's holding. The reboot seemed to be the... Hey, have you ever heard of the movie Wolfwalkers? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for a very short period, I actually worked on Wolfwalkers. Yep, Aaron's name is in the credits. But I, I definitely... Uh, those, those group of artists, that group of artists um, is... Um, they're so talented. Nick and I had the pleasure of going over there and uh, spending some time at the studio uh, while they were making the film, I got to I gave them a little lecture on four legged locomotion and with dogs and not that they needed it, but um, but it was it was fun. And uh, man, it's a great studio over there. Uh, Martin Berger said that the uh, Art of Aaron Blaze book uh, both uh, both books arrived in December. Thank you. I'm so glad I bought both books. Oh, I'm glad you did too. Cora on YouTube. You helped pay my mortgage. (laughs) Cora is our expensive books. Uh, (laughs) Cora on YouTube asks, would you please talk a little bit about how you designed the ancestors and what the process was like? I always thought they were so ethereal and beautiful as a kid. Well, that's the idea. So we really wanted them to feel very obviously ghost-like because they're ghosts. And, um, and so I didn't want them to have feet. None of them have feet. They just kind of fade away into wispiness. Um, but one of, the, one of the things you'll notice on all of them is that their, their sleeves, the overlap, their hair, none of that ever stops moving. It's, it's like it's underwater. And that I really wanted that, you know, for that ghost kind of feel. And... Um, and so the way that I did that was after I would animate the characters first without animating the sleeves. I'd animate the characters first. 
and get them all in between. And then I would go through and take every eighth frame. So I, you know, on eights, very even, very evenly. And I would go through and animate straight ahead all of the overlap on the sleeves according to how the character is moving, but doing it on every eighth frame. And so then what I would do is break that down evenly. So I would do an even in between onto fours and then two more even in betweens onto twos. And what that did was it made the sleeves move very evenly, very much like it's underwater. And that's how I did that. Uh, what's your favorite Blue Sky movie? Uh, I say Burning Man, Epic, Rio. Um, uh, I would say... I don't know. I love the Ice Age movies. I thought it was a good series. Yeah, I thought they were great. And I did enjoy Ferdinand. Yeah, I like Ferdinand. I got to work on Ferdinand just a little bit. Oh, did you? I did. Well, I did a, some test animation for them. Uh, Corey on YouTube asks, uh, if you could direct another Disney movie, would you would you try to mix 2D with 3D like they did with Klaus, or would you solely do it as a digital 2D? And what would you, and would you even want to direct another movie? Well, I definitely want to direct again. I'm more, you know, at one time I wanted to, you know, pull out all the bells and whistles, but I'm starting to, I'm getting to a point now, and this is one of the things I'm, one of the reasons I want to do Snow Bear so badly is I want to do just a bare bones, just really simple, visually simple, 2D animated film story and just keep it simple and, you know, Nice, clear character animation, um, but simple storytelling, simple character interaction. And uh, and so if I were to do one, I'd, yeah, I'd love to just do something very, very, uh, no 3D, just straight up drawing and, uh, and, and tell the story that way. Really embrace um, the art form. That to me is that that I just think could be really cool. Someone yeah. wants to know where is Dustin? Dustin's right there. Hi. Is your mic on, Dustin? It should be. I'm just curious. By the way. Should be on. I might just be a, li a little quiet. Is the switch on? The switch is on. Okay. The switch is on. Oh, the switch is on. I'm just not talking this much because there's not many people asking questions right now. Okay. Probably because people gave up after the streams cut out. <laughs> we definitely have less people watching now, but I think it's because they don't get the alert that many times. Can you do a tutorial on how to use a timing sheet? Actually, if you go watch the latest YouTube channel, a uh, video on YouTube. Aaron goes over that in a, a decent amount of detail. It's not exactly I do. a tutorial, but uh but that being said, if um I've got a new course coming out in the next couple of weeks on uh it's an advanced animation course on um you know animating complex mechanics and how you can do that and still get the performance. Um I've got a new that so that's coming out and in that course I talk about exposure sheets in detail uh, and I talk about uh, charts as well how you create the charts for the exposure well not the exposure sheets but for the follow-up crew It's <laughs> stuck in my head. Glenn Fry. He was one of the evil, right? Glenn What's that? What's that? Glenn Fry was in the Eagles, right? Yeah, he was an he was a founding member. That's what I thought. 
He just passed away a couple of years ago. Do you think that uh, the announcement that Disney is looking for traditional animation interns may, means that a new 2D project will come soon? What road do you think they'll go? I am, I'm sure it is, but I don't know. I didn't, I've never heard that, so that's news to me. That's cool. I mean, they've been doing 2D shorts and stuff like that for a little while now, so I imagine they're gearing up for a 2D feature. Yeah. It'd be hard for me to believe they don't have something. There's always stuff in development. There's something up their sleeve. There's always something in development. Whether or not it comes to fruition is a... Should we give them black hair? For some reason, that's what I pictured. Did you hear that Glenn Keane and his son Max Keane are creating a Netflix series called Trash Truck? Yes. Which I think is a series of books they did also, right? Yeah, it was, uh, but yeah, it's all stuff that Max came up with. You knew Max since he was little, right? I have. Uh, Shelly says a uh, suggestion for the next art contest, uh, self-portrait drawing, maybe? Oh, that's cool. No. No. Man, this, uh, yes, I'm just kidding. This stylus is really driving me nuts. It's really bad. I wonder if it's a driver issue. No, it's, it's, it's been gradually doing this and gradually getting worse. And I've, I've dropped it a couple of times since it's started doing this. It's not too bad now. Uh, why was Eric Goldberg the uh, first animator on Aladdin when he did his genie test with Robin Williams? Why was he the first? Yeah, why was he the... I don't know. <laughs> Probably because the genie was the key. Role yeah, he the... was. I mean, he was definitely the key. And he was. They knew he was going to be the big draw. Um, Quite literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> har har. But I mean, Eric was already known... Before Disney is a yeah, he was a pretty well known animator to begin with. Um, well, he was you know they Eric had a big uh, influence on the style of Aladdin as well. The Al Hirschfeld style was something that Eric already did naturally. Where do you get all of your uh, references for animals? Twitch question. Um, from life, usually. I try to I try to get everything, you know, we go to Africa, we go to we go to, you know, out west to Wyoming, you know, uh, Montana. All over the world. By the way, if you hear the uh, what sounds like construction work outside, it's Aaron's dad sanding. Uh, what's he building right now? Uh, that... We're we're building some shelves uh, for uh, some very cool rustic shelves. Nice. Jeez. <laughs> you remember the tiger with Aaron's face? Yeah, that was. Fun. <laughs> Good Rush drummer Neil Pert died a couple years ago. Were you a fan? Yes. Neil Pert? He didn't die? What? Yeah, he did. When did Neil Pert die? Two years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Remember uh, Darren Bader was all upset about it? Oh, yeah. He's like a gigantic Rush fan.
Uh, some people came in late. Uh, can you show the underdrawing uh, at some point? Yes. The pencil drawing. Uh, for those who did come in late, what this is here is this is an old concept drawing that Aaron did for Mulan, and he's decided to go in and update it and make it digital. Yeah. Let's do it in color. Uh, have you ever met Don Bluth? No. I don't know why, but with the red right now and at this angle, it looks like he's a professional wrestler. <laughs> I'm going to throw some black in here. Come on. Just laying in the local color for now. Is this just the basic round brush? Yeah, this is just a basic round brush. Yep, that's all it is. You're not using your pastel C. No, this lays down a nice solid. Yeah, you don't want the chalk texture. Color. Let me show you. Let me sh let me show you something. Let me show you. What was your favorite animated release of 2021? What was out there? Uh, here, let's see. So this is the original sketch, the original drawing right here. Uh, I had I have hundreds of these, but this is one that I liked in particular for for today. That's what we're creating today. Uh, Encanto, Luca, Ooh. Ron's Gone Wrong. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, I'm just doing features because of Paw Patrol, the movie, Space Jam, uh, Boss Baby, Back in Business, Family Action Adventure. Uh, let's see. I said Luca already. Spirit Untamed. And, oh, Raya and the Last Dragon. Okay. Uh, Tom and Jerry. Uh, the SpongeBob movie. The second one. Let's see. And I think that's it as far as features. There's probably something I'm missing, but you probably go with Encanto, I imagine. Probably Encanto. Is that yeah. how you say it? Is it Encanto or Encanto? I haven't seen it yet, so I don't. Sorry if I'm butchering the name. Oh, the Mitchells versus the Machines was on Netflix. That was actually a pretty fun movie. It was pretty good. Uh, did you ever see uh, the Mitchells? No. Is that a TV? Oh, it's a TV show, right? I believe so. This is the one that um, where a guy pretends to be a sidekick. Yeah, he's blonde. Yeah, blonde guy. It's like a, it's like a bloody cop show or something. Something, something like that. Yeah, I think I'll stick with that. Let me keep this really simple. Did Chris Sanders create Lilo and Stitch, and was he an influence on the uh, Disney DreamWorks movie? He, yeah, Lilo and Stitch uh, was his idea, as, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And um, and was he an influence? What? What was the uh, question? On the Disney and DreamWorks movie. But I don't think Lilo and Stitch. Well, he he co-directed the first uh, Dragon. How to Train a Dragon. Oh, right. 
Indeed, new bar took it over. New boy. Oh, Arcane came out in 2021 as well, but isn't that a series? It's a series, yeah. Yeah, yeah they've already, um, yeah, Arcane's already announced a uh, second season, which I think comes out later this year. I'm very, very, very excited for it. Which question? I wonder if anyone still does traditional cell animation. I know uh, digital is faster and more cost productive, but I still think there's value in keeping the art alive. You know, oh, sure. Still doing cells? I have no idea. Uh, from Mike uh, Fenster. Uh, hi, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? I just got a graphite stick holder uh, from Creative Mark. Uh, loving drawing and sketching with it. And what's the best way to sharpen your graphite sticks? Uh, usually it's a little sandpaper pad. You can get these little sandpaper pads that are pretty cool. Pretty sweet. They're pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. And what was the brush you just switched to? Was there a brush you switched to? This is like a little chunk uh, pastel brush that I've got. Pastel? Pastel. Is your, uh, uh, hold on, wait, I just lost the question. Scroll on me, hold on. Uh, so with that, you need to do a, uh, to read out of an impersonation line. I <laughs> <laughs> want me to do my call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just ignore it. Is there a reason why Mushu is a small dragon? Uh, they, they wanted to make him diminutive, small, so that everything was against him, against the odds. It was, it was him. The odds of him succeeding were small. So I mentioned about um because they mentioned Ar arcane and arcane's on Netflix. Uh, someone mentioned that the uh they loved uh, all the Lost in Space series. Yeah, apparently they're not making any more of that. Oh so they're not? No. No. But I will when it comes to Lost in Space, I have a guilty pleasure pleasure uh enjoying the what was it, the late early two thousands? Was it early two thousands or late nineties? But that Lost in Space uh, come out. It was the 90s, I think. Was it 90s? Let me, let me check that out. Um, Here's a question. Uh, Mr. Blaze. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no. I didn't mean to step on you. Uh, Mr. Blaze, have you ever felt that your drawing wasn't sufficient enough at any point and gotten uh, unmotivated while you're doing it? I feel that way sometimes myself. Any advice? No, we all have. I I don't know that. Uh, I don't get. I don't lose motivation. I get more determined. Yeah, I, I mean, we all go through points of Strong. feeling like we're not good enough. But I don't feel like I'm losing motivation at that point. I get more determined and want to want to create even more because I want to break through that. You know, there's always there's always you know. There's always, you know, drawing is hard. It's not always fun. Oh, here was the question I was going to ask earlier that I lost. Aaron, what are your thoughts on the new Cintiq that you reviewed, the, the 16 Cintiq Pro versus the Wacom 1 that you reviewed a while back? Well, they're two different things. I mean, to me, they're two different, completely different price points. They're both great, and they're both super smooth and easy to use, and I love them both. But, you know there's a huge difference in the screen resolution, which is big for me. And, um, and the, you know, the, the feel of the screen itself. Um, if I was, if I was buying one or the other, I would probably stick with the, the, unless you're going up in size. Um, I would probably stick with the, uh, the, the walk of one only because it's so much cheaper. Um, I would wait, you know, for something uh, a little bigger. 
Although, I mean, there's an advantage to the Cintiq being portable, but I see what well, you're yeah, saying. I, 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 no, absolutely. So, I mean, that's just me. But um, if you're know. looking for portability and only going to use that and don't plan on getting a larger desktop, then no, exactly. the Cintiq Pro could be, the 16 Pro could be a good choice. But I, yeah. I get what you're saying, though. I think if you're just going for having a convenience factor and price point, it's hard to beat the Wacom One. Yeah. Yeah, that thing, and Wacom One is extremely lightweight compared to the other, the other Cintiqs. Well, oh, the yeah. Cintiq that you guys just did the other day, how's that? Is that heavier than the one? No. I actually, I actually never felt the, the weight of it. Let me, let me feel that weight. I love it. Not bad at all. YouTube comment. Uh, actually, Aaron's the most Canadian sounding Florida man ever. <laughs> I'm from Vermont, pretty close to Canada. Eh? Yeah, actually, so. the one is like half the weight of this. Really? Yeah. It is, it is extremely less. Like What's your favorite movie that you animated in? Um, probably Lion King. Uh, from Simon. Uh, hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, Simon? Simon Durgez. <laughs> uh, is there a word for when you just show Chromium. Up? Huh? Chromium. Chromium? Yeah, it's, it's a word. But is there a word for when you just uh, show a version of an animated movie where you just have the uh, storyboard art with the voices going over it? Yes, it's called the story reel. Story reel. That is the proper term. Uh, YouTube comment. Literally, your book just arrived, and it's incredible. I know, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I am happy that it showed up. I, I'm, I'm purposely sounding like a jerk. So I'm very happy you got it. And uh, we are, you know, Nick and I were, you know, we didn't, we went into this kind of blind, but Nick... This is all Nick. Nick really put that together. I was, I was busy doing other stuff throughout the year, and Nick was the one that pulled all the. You know, we went through the art together. We we had weekly art meetings as far as what was going to go into the book, but it was Nick that put the book together. Yeah, both books are now shipping. I'm pretty much caught up to real time, so if you order it, it goes out pretty darn quick nowadays. Yeah. Uh, from Gallimar, uh, not that way. Uh, speaking of Mushu from the, from the earlier question, uh, did you ever get to meet Eddie Murphy? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't animate Mushu. Tom Bancroft animated Mushu, and I think Tom did go up to record. Uh, at they, rec they did a lot of Mushu's recordings um, at Eddie Murphy's house. In, yeah, because he had a New recording Jersey. studio in his house, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, my own personal question: Is it com is, is it a common thing for um, animators to meet the the actors that are voicing the characters that they're animating? Yes, it is common. Is it only with the supervisor, or usually? Or yes, it's usually just with the supervisor. Okay. Keep this really simple. And doing my typical shadow. Shadow across. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, from Joanne, I have a bunch of uh, really old uh, or just old and new drawings. I want to redraw and color and etc. Uh, to create a decent uh, professional portfolio out of uh, Photoshop and AI uh, to redraw and color old drawings, um, like what you're doing today. Uh, which one would you prefer and why? Okay, you completely confused me on everything you just said. Like, Say it again. She has, like, very old drawings. She has uh, maybe, like, a few years old drawings and then drawings that she probably made this year. Um, and she wants to recreate a couple of them for her portfolio. Uh, which ones do you think she should 
uh, tackle first. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't see the drawings. <laughs> personal opinion. <laughs> Well, it's not even a personal opinion. I have no opinion. There's nothing for me to look at. I don't know what. No, but I mean, I'm saying it's it's personal preference. There's no right or wrong answer on that. You know, if you were if you're wanting to. No, read there's it. no answer to it. Is what I'm saying. The, the, what drawings do you? Do? You're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I'm saying you can't possibly answer that because it's a personal preference question. Like uh, that's like saying, would you rather go left or go right? Yeah, I know, but you're missing what I'm saying because there's. There's no, there's not enough information to even make a preference. I is what I'm saying. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you got to give me more info, people. More have, info. Have you ever had an eye-opening mentor that got your animation to the next level? Who was, who was he or she? Oh, that was Glenn Keane all the way. Glenn Keane and, and Mark Hen. Yeah, they were definitely. Those are the guys that brought me taught me everything YouTube another YouTube question have you ever seen a project that you worked on on the big screen and felt disappointed by how it turned out not necessarily with your job on it but, but the, the final product uh, I've been disappointed in my own work you know I look back on stuff and go oh man I wish I knew more and did more uh, you know I look at Raja from Aladdin and I cringe a little bit at that I wish I could have done better with it uh, little things like that here and there um, and, you know, there's, we always have, you know, I look at Brother Bear, which is the first film that I directed and, and cringe at a lot of stuff on there that I wish I, we would have written differently or recorded differently. Um, but you know, you, you, you did the best you could at the time and, and you move on. Now, as far as being disappointed with a project, and, uh, no, I've never been, I've never really worked on a project that I've. I've been disappointed with in general. Uh, from Neil, um, you mentioned once that you're not crazy about film festivals in general. Uh, can you explain why? Because most of the films are terrible. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it other than that. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, most of the films aren't that great. And so it, it's really hard. You you're, you t and tend to weed through a lot of stuff that isn't great, you know, in order to find the stuff that is. And, um, you know, that's just bluntness right there. But it's, um, yeah, it's just, there's a lot of, a lot of films that aren't, that just don't, don't hit it. So usually when I, if we do go to a film festival, I try to find the ones that have really got some buzz about them. And those are the ones that I go. And most people are like that. That's what most people do. Uh, why did you hire uh, Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis to voice Sweat and Two for Brother Bear? Because they, um, back in the 70s, they did these characters called uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie, who I was huge fans of. <laughs> yes, uh, there were uh, these characters that they created for um, Canadian television called SCTV, which is Canadian, Canada's um, answer to Saturday Night Live. And... Oh, um, yeah, and they were they were so funny, and um, growing up in the seventies, I just thought I just loved it. And my co-director Bob Walker, he was even he was older than me and really and, and Canadian, and um, and actually Bruce Johnson, who uh, was on the picture early with us as well, was a big fan. And so all of us were just like, you know, we got to get these moose in here. And we gotta we gotta get Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas and see if we can get them to reprise our roles. Now, never do we say Bob and Doug, but it's pretty obvious that those are the characters that they're playing. And um, and so it's it was a lot of fun in that way. Um, why did Ollie Johnson always say to animators, including Glenn Keane, "Don't animate, animate what you're doing. doing; animate what the characters thinking." Yeah. It's because that's that's it gives you more honest performance. It's a much more honest performance because people get so caught up in the mechanics of what a character is doing, they forget about the acting, they forget about the emotion, and that's where you get into what the character is thinking. And so, you know, a character, nobody is ever just doing something. They're doing it with an attitude. They're doing it with a purpose. They're doing it um, with something in mind. That's what you want to animate. 
That's what you want to get across. And it's funny you brought that up because I say that I've picked that up as well. And I was, you know, I've been saying that in the new course that I, I've, uh, we put out there that we're, that we're going to be putting out there coming up. You guys are going to love it. I hope you do. Um, but it's, uh, it's breaking down, separating the performance from the mechanics. And uh, once again, it's basically what that means is animate what your character is thinking. Don't get caught up in what they're doing. Just animate what they're thinking. Now, there's still, you know, there, there might be complex uh, mechanics that you got to deal with. And that's what I take you through in the course and how to do that. And uh, for the shadow that you just a minute ago, uh, did you just do flipping that to the shadow? I'm doing a clipping mask over the whole thing, but not to do the shadows. It's just there's, I've got it, so I can't, you see, I can't draw outside of him. I can only draw, um, I can only draw uh, in, within his silhouette. 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 And that was from uh, Lanka, and uh, another question from Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey there, mate. And Laika. Uh, when will uh, tickets go on sale for your upcoming in-person workshop? I would love to attend and meet you in person. Um, we don't have any plans yet. So... Yeah, we haven't announced one yet. So Oh, yeah. So um, stay tuned. We're having an in-person workshop tomorrow. No. <laughs> uh, Aaron, do you have any fun stories from the Florida studio you could tell us about the time, about while you were working on Mulan? I've always heard that the staff there was really close and friendly. We were all very close. We we all kind of, we came you know we all started young. We were all in our twenties, and um, uh, there yeah we've got lots of stories. It's a lot of we we're doing a lot of pranks to each other, to each other and rubber band wars. rubber band wars all the time. Mulan was the first film you worked with Byron on, right? Yes. Yep. Yep, Milan was the first film I worked with Byron on. And it was also the first film that was conceived and basically executed in the Florida studio. Uh, we spent years trying to, you know, kind of break out and get our own our own project. And so um, uh, that was, that film was uh, was our answer to that. For those that don't know, Byron Howard is the director of Encanto and Zootopia and Tangled and Bolt, and he originally worked with Aaron on Mulan. He was his uh, assistant animator, although he was an incredible animator in his own right. I mean, yeah, well, not even in his own right. He just was, he was an awesome animator. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so, and um, he... Uh, well, that was his per first... Yeah, he was just awesome. Big break gig, right? It was, yeah. Yep. He was a tour guide at the, at the, at the studio there. That's how he started out, and um, it was coming down to figure drawing classes and and you know all the other stuff that they were they offered at our studio. Art jams on YouTube asks Aaron. I have a question. How and where do you get inspiration for your art? And are there any times when you just don't know what to draw? Oh, I, there's lots of times I don't know what to draw. But I when I hit that, I'll just sit and just start. I'll just start drawing. And it's just random. I'll draw, start drawing shapes. I'll start. Um, uh, other times, I'll look at. I'll watch TV. I'll pull up documentaries, um, nature documentaries, things like that. That'll that are inspiring. I do all kinds of things like that to to kind of get my creative juices going in my brain. This is funny. We've got several people watching in Sweden because on YouTube, I've got somebody that said they just got their book in Sweden. And, oh really? And then on Twitch, I've got several people that are saying, "Hey, I'm a big fan of yours from Sweden. I just started drawing and painting around two years ago. I was looking for some animal drawing resources, and I stumbled upon you. I've studied you religiously uh, since, and I more or less only like to draw animals. The bear tutorial was amazingly helpful. And then a whole bunch of people are saying, "I'm watching from Sweden too." So we've got hello wow. Sweden. Hello Sweden. Oh, okay. So. Joanne, who was asking the the question about the old, very old, or new artwork. Uh, <laughs> I knew that was going to come back. Uh, she meant, like, the 
which has the best feature to recreate for artwork, which is um, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop? Oh, I would say Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah, it's Illustrator is more for... I mean, again, that depends on what type of artwork. If you're doing a logo, yeah. Illustrator would be what you'd want to do. If you're doing, you know, they're completely different programs. But people get confused by the name Illustrator. Illustrator is not for drawing. It's really not. It's for vector graphics. It's it's great for like logos and banner signs and business cards. It's it's the ideal program for that sort of stuff. It's not for illustration, even though it's called illustrator. And there are some people that do vector illustration, but they're few and far between. Uh, from Leandro, uh, hey Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? Uh, did you watch uh, the documentaries Waking Sleeping Beauty and uh, Frank and Ollie on Disney Plus? Yes, I have seen them. Uh, what did you think of those documentaries? They're great. I love them. Bill Jones says, yo, Aaron, what's up, man? Bill Jones. Mulan, Mulan crew was awesome. Yes, they were. Bill Jones and I went to college together. And we, yeah, we, and we worked together at Disney. Hey, guys, we're hiccuping. Oh no! Don't tell me that. It's showing. It's showing green on my end. Uh, it could just be me. Hold on, let me check the. It, could just it, be it it's only you. No, YouTube was just spinning. I think it was just me. Okay, yeah. sorry. Uh, but um, I remember. I remember. Uh, I, I remember. You remember you. Man. You remember. Uh, but um, this back in <laughs> back when we were working on Mulan, and I think it was what what ninety. Six, ninety-seven. Like I was probably around like five or six years old. So you guys were still in the uh, the uh, trailers while the uh, while the main building was in construction, I think. Yeah. And remember, um, Austin and I were in uh, came to your to your office or to your uh, cubicle. I can't remember exactly what, but I remember you showed us the camera. <clears throat> That you used to take the, the images. We're going to start doing that again. We beat the heck out of each other. That's what it was. <laughs> Austin, I remember we did a stop motion of us hopping, hopping in, and then Austin grabbed my head. And this is, it didn't actually happen, but we, we did stop motion of it. it looking like that. She slammed my head into the desk, <laughs> fly back, and then she just hopped out of the frame. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that again. Oh Actually, we should have done that. Too. That would have been a fun live stream. <laughs> Aaron, did you watch many nature programs growing up? And do you have any favorites then or now? Yeah, always. And, yeah, I mean, it was always Mutual Omaha's Wild Kingdom, and it was the whole series. I loved it. Uh, from Shelley. Uh... Because this is a ghost, uh, do you do you think he would have rings on his hand or any jewelry? He might. We can add that. Right now, I'm just I'm just laying in. I love that because he's a ghost. Do you think he would have jewelry? I know. It just makes me wonder. Like, what else? <laughs> well, wouldn't you think that the you could say because he's a ghost, would he not be naked? Right. Yeah. Why do ghosts have clothes on? Yeah. Well, they don't want to be indecent. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, ghosts would, would leave behind their earthly earthly belongings. Yeah. 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 YouTube comment. I bought your Birds of Prey course, and I'm nothing short of amazed by it. Thank you so much for these insights. <laughs> sorry, sorry it's so long. That was a... Thank that was you. a fun project. Yeah. Thank you so much for these insightful, in-depth tutorials for such a reasonable price. You are How welcome. You work on that? Two months? Four months. Four, Four months? months? It was too long. My lord. Aaron uh, starts with long hair, then buzzes his hair, and then by the end it's grown out again. <laughs> That's right. I, but I thought one of them, you get to see me lose weight, and then I gain weight back. And... <laughs> Who designed and supervised uh, Shan Yu in uh, Mulan? Press Romanios. Uh, Press was a great guy. Press is gone now. We oh. lost him to leukemia. But Press is, uh, he was a great friend. A great friend to all of us. I mean, we all loved Press. And um, just, a, yeah, just an amazing artist. 
an amazing guy. You just couldn't ask for a better guy. I want to let people know that uh, if you're liking Aaron's digital painting and want to learn more about how to do it, we've got a sale going on this weekend. Our digital painting courses for digital painting in Photoshop and digital painting in Procreate are both 50% off uh, this weekend over at creatureartteacher.com. Um, that sale ends on Monday, so uh, this is a great time to get them on sale. On sale. And they're both really popular courses and both really in-depth. So. Cool. Um. When will your uh, new animation course be done? It's Hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I've got one more video to shoot. Dustin's finishing up uh, editing the last actual animation part of it. I don't know if I said that right. Um, but, um, yeah, we're getting close. Uh, some time ago, you mentioned about using Clip Studio Paint during one of the live streams. Uh, do you still plan to do it? Uh, yeah, I guess. I, uh, it's not something that's come up. But yeah, I'm sure I will at some point. Yeah, yeah, we're going to give it a whirl. I have the whole idea. Aaron tries Krita. Aaron tries Clip Studio Paint. Aaron <laughs> tries this. Uh, Blender, which is an animation program. I think it'd be kind of fun. Uh, question. Greetings from Algeria. Do you think getting into the animation t industry today is harder than 40 years ago? And how else do you think the industry has changed? I actually think it's easier than it was 40 years ago because... There's way more jobs. There's way more jobs, yeah. I would um, agree. Yeah. But, um, Doesn't mean but that being be said, there's way more jobs. Right. And so there's a lot more diversity in what you can do. And um, and there's a lot more diversity as far as um, uh, the the makeup of female male to female and and everything else. So it's I I just think it's a it's a great great time to be in the industry. Absolutely, so a lot more jobs. Uh, from Shanna, uh, and I'm guessing she is looking for some for something that's very portable. Um, What's the way forward, iPad Pro or Waka, or which do you prefer? They're different. Well, it depends on what you what you're trying to do and what you, you know how you're going to be doing your work. I when I'm Why when not I'm both? when I'm uh, working in the studio, I prefer my Wacom because I like to work big. Can you show the studio? Can you show them how big this is? Um. You know, I like I like working really large, and so um, you can't do that obviously with an iPad Pro. Um, yeah, the squirrels are going nuts out there. Being tangled by cords. That's the best thing right now. Yeah, that's all right. So. Um, so the, I, you know, you can see this is nice and big, and and a uh, pleasure to work on. I've heard there's a bit of ageism in the animation industry, tending to prefer younger artists over older. Is that true? And do you have any thoughts on it? I, you know, I don't know that that is true. Um, but I, I, you know, I've been out of the. I'm I'm falling on the. I was the oldest. I was the, when I started out. I was the youngest guy in the studio. Um, and I don't know that there was any ages of men. Um, I mean, I, I, it's, I think it's like any other industry. But, I, I think what happens is, and this is just my experience, the older people tend to retire and there's more younger people come in. And as those younger people move up the ranks, they hire, they tend to hire more younger people. Yeah, they hire their friends and they hire people that they know. And yeah, know that I, they're familiar I don't think with. it's, I don't think it's any sort of overt uh i've experienced a little bit of ageism in the past but very uh, very little when i when i um had some dealings with another studio that i was associated with but um but i think that comes down to the individual and the yeah it was the individual yeah. it wasn't the studio by any means martin's asking uh Aaron, do you do you know the guy that said hey lady died 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> and he didn't say, hey, Lady Di. He goes, yo, Princess Di. Yo, Princess Di. <laughs> Who was that? I'm not going to say his name. Oh, okay. <laughs> his... Yeah, he'll deny it anyway. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about if you're listening. Uh, have you ever drawn a uh, Saiga antelope? Is that what you're talking about? Saiga? Saiga? Oh, Saiga. Saiga antelope? No. They've got funny, weird noses. They're Chinese ah. or Mongolian. Maybe Chinese or Mongolian. I, can't remember. I don't want to go to Mongolia. Yeah. That would be a cool spot. It would, yeah. It would be, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a... What's your favorite chord? Isn't it weird? What's that? What's your favorite chord on a guitar? My favorite chord is A major 7. There you go. Saiga, the Saiga antelope, or Saiga, is a critically endangered antelope, which during uh, anti antiquity inhabited a vast area of the Eurasian, subspanning the foothill of the Carpathian Mountains in the northwest. And uh, someone just. Mongolia. Someone who clearly has uh, just Mongolia. joined says, huh, I'm getting some Mulan, Mulan vibes here. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> so, well, I, they did good eye. You did good. So for that person that's just do joining, uh, Aaron animated, this was actually based on the original design. We should probably see if we can show the original layer again. Uh, Aaron designed and animated all the ancestor ghosts in Mulan, as well as Yao uh, the, from the Gang of Three. And uh, this was his, uh, he took one of his old character design sketches and decided he wanted to paint it. So that's why you're getting the, the vibes. This is the, the main ancestor ghost early concept. Yeah, let me show you the, uh, the original concept. That's the original concept right there. The original drawing. Uh, what prank did you play on Phil Jones? Uh, I don't think I played any pranks on Phil Jones. Phil Jones would have kicked my butt. Are you kidding me? Uh, have you ever been to the Australian Disney Studio? No, I've never been to Australia. Be yeah, we need to go to Australia. This is an interesting part. Yeah, that, it's funny you said that. I was just thinking, I think that should be our next international trip. But, um... Aaron, uh, hey. our next big one, you know, uh, I was, uh, I love your work and I, uh, I wanted to know, can you share a little bit more about yourself? What would you say is the spark that made you who you are today? Love from India. Wow. The spark that made me who I am today. Uh, you know, I think it's my love of art and nature that uh, I don't know how to, I mean, beyond that, as far as going any deeper than that, I don't. You know, there's a lot of things that influenced me to be the person I am right now. Um, negative things in my life that affected me in a certain way, positive things that affected me. We all have these these types of things. And uh, uh, I had a lot of great positive mentors in my life. that um, uh, really affected me quite a bit in, in the way that I approach my everyday life or whatever. <clears throat> but, um, but really, it comes down to, for me, it's just nature. And, and I love, you know, at one time, I used to think I was a, a real loner. I didn't, I didn't need people. And... Um, you know, I just wanted to be alone and do art and just be a hermit up in the mountains and live in a cabin. And the older I've gotten, the more I realize I'm not that way. The more I, I love the company of other people. And... Yeah, you like small groups. Like, you like 
you're you're mr like come on over let's hang out let's yeah i am yeah, i'm definitely that yeah <laughs> and you hate uh, big crowds though i do hate crowds i get i get anxiety around crowds but um i really love camaraderie and hanging out and and uh to me that's just the best i'm always bugging nick nick come over let's have drinks mm. And I'm like, no. <laughs> we got to be responsible. We got a business to run. It's 10 in the morning. <laughs> On a Tuesday. <laughs> uh, what traditional media courses are you planning to uh, produce in 2022? Wash, acrylics? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the above. Yeah. Well, Lulu says, you all see Mulan style, but I'm just seeing my evil fourth grade teacher in this drawing. <laughs> Why have you two not brought me your home? <laughs> How do you plot your lighting for something like this? I'm just generally keeping it in my mind, you know, kind of up above and off to the left. But there's a lot you can get away with. Um, by just faking it. And a lot of it is also just, you know, how does it look? Um, uh, just aesthetically. Uh, for Martin, will there be a primates course soon? Uh, no, I don't know about soon, but there will be. I get that request so often. Uh, who are Bill, Hannah, and Joe Barbara? Famous? Barbara. Barbara. Hannah Barbara. Barbara. They did a lot of the Saturday morning cartoons that you, well, I don't know if you grew up on, but that we grew up on, the Gen Xers. You know, Scooby Doo and oh, all that kind of, yeah. Flintstones. Flintstones. Flintstones uh, oh. Tom and Jerry. Hannah Bar yeah. The Jetsons. Uh, the Jetsons, yeah. Right? Hannah, so that, Tom and Jerry. That two started all that? I don't know if they did. Did they do Tom and Jerry? I don't think they I did. I could be wrong on that. What's that, Dustin? So they did all, they, they were responsible for all those? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no. They, yeah, they did Tom and Jerry. Oh, well, there you go. Tom and Jerry's an absolute classic. Mm -hmm. well, they're all classic. Absolute classic. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching a lot of Tom and Jerry growing up. Oh, it's it, it was them. It was Will Hanna and Joseph Barbera, but they did it for MGM. That's what and, I, I got gotcha. you. I knew it was Hanna Barbera, but it's not a Hanna Barbera production, technically. It was before they had their own studio. And I know I mentioned about um, Arcane earlier, but uh, did you answer if, if you've actually watched it? Uh, yeah. We, you asked that to me last week. And the week before that, too. Yeah. yeah. You've only seen the first episode so far. Uh, part of the part of the second, I can't remember. But yeah, basically. Is it true that Milk Call was the best animator at Disney? Well, he's the best draftsman. It's our. It's you know. It's arguable who's the best animator. I mean, it's all subjective. Everybody has their favorites. Um. But he was definitely. I think it was. Pretty universally accepted as the best draftsman in the studio. Someone's asking, will there be a portrait course in Photoshop? We actually have a drawing and portraits course with our friend Ken Spreduso that's available on our on our site. And he teaches both digital and traditional portraits in there. So there actually are Photoshop demos in that class. Yes. Uh, what is the best 2D animation program? TV Paint. Well, we I use TV Paint. I think it's the best. Other people, there's other programs out there. I recommend, you know, trying your hand at different ones. There's Toon Boom, which uh, a lot of people use. Um, but I, I just, my experience is, for me personally, is TV Paint's been the, been the go-to for me.
Uh, did you um, do reference for bears uh, from other Disney movies for for Brother Bear? Uh, no. No, I mean we. I look at other um, just for covering myself, I guess. Make sure so, you're not seeing the same. Yeah. Right what DPI is this? This is uh, three hundred DPI. Eighteen by twenty-four inches, so it's a big file. Back on uh, animation software, if you work on an iPad, Calipeg is pretty great. Yes. We have a class on that as well. This ghost looks like he smell, smells something nasty. <laughs> Dusty, did you fight? No, oh, it was bad. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like working with two year olds. <laughs> Uh, will you please do an animation course on advanced perspective uh, with the camera and fight sequences? No. Well, we've talked about doing camera moves and uh, and more dynamic action. So. Yes. Okay. Overruled. <laughs> Overruled. Uh, what's your <clears throat> approach to designing human characters? Um look at real human characters to begin with. Um and then you know decide on a on a design conceit. Hey Aaron, right now I'm taking your animation course on the scene approach. Which course do you recommend after that one? Uh, well, I've got the acting for animation course that I think is pretty strong. Yep. I would recommend that. If you're looking to stick with animation, if you're looking for drawing, yeah. then character design would be a good one. Boy, I really don't like that. I'd like to go on another safari in South Africa here. Yep. <laughs> Did you include any fun Easter eggs in your movies that we don't know about? Um, if you look at, if you watch Aladdin, when Raja turns back into an adult tiger because he he was turned into a, a kitten, when he jumps into the Sultan's arms and he turns back into a full size cat for just a flash of a frame. He turns into Mickey. And that one, I think, has actually been out there and documented. Oh, yeah. Are there any you did that you know? Of that... No, not really. That no one knows about? Yeah, we're not going to get a scoop here? No. Ah. Unfortunately. Scoop. There it is. It is. Let me see something here real quick. I want to see something. You want to see something? I'll show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. You know, we're going to make a design. Hope everybody out there on the East Coast is staying safe with all this snow that they're getting. I just got a pop-up alert that there's a 75 power pile up in Kentucky right now. Oh, my gosh. Oh. What? We're just getting crazy snow in the northeast. Meanwhile, it's uh, 72 degrees here in Florida. And, uh, yeah. One of the best days we've had of the year. Yeah, it's gorgeous out right now. Nice. Don't tell anyone. Please stop moving to Florida. Please. <laughs> um, I, oh, I, 
I feel I always butcher the name by accident. Um, and Andrea Deja? Andrea Deja, yes. Finally getting it right. Um, he animated um, Gaston, Jafar, and Scar, right? Correct. Uh, were there any Were there any others that he animated? Those are the three big ones. The three big ones. Uh, Cora Dawson says that it's been snowing pretty steadily here in central New York. Uh, the plows are out full force. I'm sad I didn't get my golem, unless you did it after I left to go on a bike ride, an e-bike ride. Oh, I don't see a soon. Have you ever uh, tried to draw on an anime? What do you think of anime, and have you ever tried to draw on a manga or anime style? I've never really tried to draw, well, I'm, I'm kind of, but not really. Uh, it's okay. I mean, I've just never really tried it. And as far as the animation goes, you've been asked that a lot. It's like any, it's not about the, the style. It's about there's there's good animation, good anime and bad anime. It's all about the storytelling, right? Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do, some <clears throat> spacing here. Hey, Andrea, it's also um, Animate Mama Odie, or is that... Uh, that? Yeah, that may have been him, I can't or remember. Bill, or is it Bill? I don't know. Bill, uh, Tightla? No, Bill Tightla is animated back in the 30s. All right. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, someone was asking, um, the, which one of Bill Titus characters uh, did you like? Oh, the the devil in Bald Mountain. Oh, you did that? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good one. Yeah, Nick, uh, he's was saying that minus 7.6 Fahrenheit here is recently warmed up. <laughs> oh my. No, I don't like that. So we're going to get rid of that. I had it. I just had it. I had it. Nice. Get rid of the scatter. Okay. What are you trying to do for people just, to join me? I'm just creating a random. I want to get a nice little pattern on his, uh, on his robe. I'm just playing with. Uh, did you see lions hunt buffaloes in Kenya? Uh, we almost saw some lions hunt uh, water uh, water buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. But the the water buffalo ended up uh, bolting. Did Andreas also animate Hercules? Oh yes, he did. That's right. Thank you. Animated who? Hercules. 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 On that topic, what are your thoughts on Hercules? I like Hercules. I thought it was fun. Somebody call me that <laughs> I actually like the music in Hercules, the kind of gospel yeah. style music. With the muses. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting uh, change of pace compared to other um, uh, uh, ancient Greek movies. You didn't work on Hercules at all because that's when you were knee deep in Brother Bear, right? Uh, it was either Brother Bear or Mulan. I think Mulan and Hercules were pretty close together. Yeah, I can't remember which one. What year was Hercules? Let me look that up. I'll look it right now. 
See, that was 97. Okay, so I was just getting started on, on finishing up Mulan and getting started on Brother Bear. Well, that's yeah, Mulan, 98. No, 97. That says 90. Mulan, 98. Mulan came out in 98. Mm-hmm. Right, but he was already done on that. Yeah. Right. I started we Brother Bear. When Hercules came out. Yeah, I started Brother Bear in 97. That's what I thought, because I thought somebody had asked you that once a long time ago, and I remember you saying that, that you were in the early development on Brother Bear at that point. Yes. I don't believe the guy, have you seen um, they have the new uh, Book of Boba Fett on Disney Plus? Yeah. I'm not crazy about it. No. You, don't, you don't like The Mandalorian. Either. I don't, yeah, I just feel, all those shows, I just don't feel like anything happens. Nothing happens. That's kind of an interesting question. Story or art, what do you love most? Um, Like personally. Right. Oh, shoot. Well, I'm I'm better at art than I am story, but I love story. And obviously, art telling story is preferably where I'd be at. By the way, it wasn't Water Buffalo, it was Cape Buffalo, Dustin, because someone was like, wait, Water Buffalo and the Mustang Mara? Is that the same thing? What's the difference between Water Buffalo and Cape Buffalo? Well, they they tend to be interchangeable. But a water buffalo tends to be more of an Asian. But Cape buffalo is the proper term. Uh, Do you ever have any um, experience with John Musker, uh, Ron, Ron Clements? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cons. Yep. Or they're friends. I, mean, I, I would call us friends. In fact, we just, we just sent them a book. What, yeah. was, it, what was it like working with them? Oh, they were great. They're, I mean, they're the most prolific directing team in Disney history. They directed nine or ten films, right? Something like that. A lot. And they're really nice guys. Uh, how did how did you learn a uh, caricature? Um, just looking at other people, watching them, and how they do it, and uh, Disney, and emulating other artists. See, John did copying. <laughs> John Musker. I'm assuming they always did films together, but I just happened to pull John's IMDb. He did Great Mouse Detective, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Hercules, Treasure Planet, Princess and the Frog, Moana. Yeah, Moana was their last one. Yeah. I think they just signed a deal to do I saw that. some Marvel stuff. Yeah. Oops. Man, this... Freaking thing is driving me nuts. Driving me nuts, eh? Did you work on The Lion King? I did work on The Lion King. I created Nala. He designed and animated Young Nala. As well as uh, you did a few shots of Simba, adult Simba, later on, right? Yep. Yeah, I helped out with a little bit of that. Battle with Scar, right? Yeah. Tiffany says, the Brother Bear soundtrack was the first CD I ever owned. Oh, really? <laughs> well, it was fun to record, I'll tell you that. It was one of the highlights of that part of the 
filmmaking process was heading down into Santa Monica, not Santa Monica, but North Hollywood and hitting the studio and recording each day. I wonder, you know that CD we found, with, or you found with the alternate takes and the alternate stuff that Phil sent you? Yeah. I wonder if we could play some of that on a stream. Like a little I don't I, I, like I sampling. I don't know that I don't know why we couldn't, because there's nothing out there that says we can't, I don't think. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we don't play the entire songs. We just say here's a little taste of this, here's a little early taste of any kind of set it up. Yeah. Just have them as cues. Where did I put the markings? There they are. You worked with Phil for four years, right? Yeah. In your opinion, what was the most catchiest Disney song? Uh, um, Under the Sea. Under the Sea. Oh, the. Uh, I always enjoyed that. Watch over it. Watch it at the end. Zippity Doo Dah. Oh, yeah. That's the one I was just trying to think of. Zippity Doo Dah. What song were you just doing? Ba -ba what song were you just um he was watching a worry from uh oh that was uh oliver and company yeah oh yeah billy so, joel i only ever saw that movie one time billy joel Little girl. zuji says that the transformation song is so cool definitely agree it was fun to do. What is going on with this? Like, what was your reaction when uh, when the song finally came together and you're hearing it in the studio for the first time? I just felt great. I don't know why, but when you're zoomed out, this looks like one of the guys from the Insane Clown Posse now. <laughs> like in front of what? Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> Rappers. Yeah. Everyone into the car. Good God, my father. He's sanding away. Slip sliding away. Uh, YouTube question. Are you going to deform the pattern at all with the cloth folds? A little bit. Have you ever found um, like a portrait of a youth that's in between a toddler and a young adult uh, more difficult uh, because of proportions moving from baby to more adult? No. It, it takes time to understand that. But once you get it, it's not that bad. Uh, who's seen Reflection in Mulan in the, uh, the singer in the uh, movie? Ming-Na Wen. Hmm? Ming-Na Wen? Oh, she actually sang it? Oh, no, no, no. No, it, no it's... Uh, no, it's... Uh, uh, um, well, um, oh, come on. The singing voice. When, I, oh, when I, Christina. No, anywhere. no, that was for the radio. It was, uh, for the... ah, I'm drawing it. I can't get her name out. Christina Aguilera? No, you just said that. It's, um, uh, oh, come on. She was in Miss Saigon. Um, Leah Salonga. Leah Salonga. Thank you. And I had no idea that uh, Ming-Na Wen was in a uh, Street Fighter movie back in 94. Uh, apparently she played Chung Li in the, the old Street Fighter movie. Yep. 
What's your thoughts on the live action Lion King? Uh, as someone that worked on it as on the original, I'd be curious to get your thoughts. I thought it was nice to look at. I I, I really do feel that the creative choices that they made from in, in treating the in treating everything so realistically, I think it inhibited the characters' abilities to emote in ways that we were able to um, on the line in, in the original animated version. Um, it just it, it it was a lot stiffer as a result. I'm actually more looking forward to the sequel. Yeah, um, I'm hoping that they take some of that criticism, or maybe they won't. Who knows? Well, I think the fact that they're not trying to recreate the original and they're creating a new story, um, I think will be to their advantage because there won't be the direct comparison. Yeah, part of it. I mean, I think that's the other weird thing is like with Jungle Book, they made it's similar to the first movie, but they made a lot of changes. With Lion King, it felt like they did beat for beat for beat, sometimes even shot for shot, and yeah, it it just invited that comparison even more, you know. Um, but the new one, I'm you know, uh, David Coleman, who has a course out on our website, a new he has two courses out on our website, and he just put out a new one. He's a uh, one of the lead story artists on the new Lion King movie, doing a lot of the boarding work. Um, we're allowed to talk about that, I, I asked him. And um, yeah, it's I'm excited to see it. Because it's, uh, I think it's more about Mufasa and Scar. And it's all prequel, right? I believe so, yeah. And I still find it funny how people still call that Lion King uh Live, live, action. live action, even though it's yeah. all CG animated. That's because Disney called it that. They tried to. They were trying that. to separate themselves a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think they were hoping they could get it in the feature category. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a best picture nomination. Yeah. And they're like, if we don't call it animation, we can get it out of the. As a live action, we get multiple rewards. <gasps> multiple Oscars. Let's do it. It's a little bit funny that they called it a live action. Like if they have one like random random guy walking around as like like a Steve like an African Steve Irwin in the light in the Lion King, then yeah, we can call it live action. <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy's name is Foster. <laughs> He's the bravest lion in all the land. And not, I'm going to touch with my finger. That's all right. You're all right, mate. You're all right. <laughs> this little cutie here, Simba. <laughs> <laughs> he was just born yesterday. He's only three pounds. <laughs> Uh, what's your favorite Miyazaki movie? I grew up with Spirited Away. Yeah, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke. Yeah, that's, that's my number one. Alongside uh, my friend Totoro. Totoro. And my top three have to be Mononoke, uh, Castle in the Sky, and Porco Rosso. I love the air. I love the animation of the uh, airplane in flight and uh, Porco Rosso. You get some details in the hair. Of uh, the two uh, popular Olivia Newton John uh, movies, which do you like more, Grease or Xanadu? Grease. The guys in the background. What guys in the background? I think we're talking about me and Dustin. Someone else that they can hear us just fine. So I don't know. Yeah, mate, your mate, they turned turn down there, but it's probably we're probably just turned down a little low on the soundboard, maybe. But we don't want to be louder than than uh, than Dad, though. Dad, Dad, Daddy O. Dad, dad Daddy O. Uh, just curious, do you prefer digital uh, or paper or 
traditional traditional i probably uh it, uh you know it, 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 i take that back it, i don't really prefer one over the other i think it's whatever you're doing right in the moment it's whatever i'm doing in the moment yeah it really is and whatever you have the time for and my murder is asking how's the achilles achilles is good you doing good there bud Achilles is good, good. Uh, Shelly says, personally, I would like an updated Rescuers movie, like Rescuers Down Under. That could be a fun one. Oh, they mean like a, like a live action remake sort of yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like Rescuers Down Under, or um, like, uh, or or even just the, the first Rescuers, or um, I actually think something like Trek and Planet would be the one to see in live action. Well, give it time; they'll get through all of them eventually. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's in. Uh, was the transformation in Brother Bear animated or digitally? Uh, or, or was it animated digitally or traditional? Uh, there's digital and traditional elements in there. Like when um, all the animals are animated in the sky, is all that TG or is all. No, that... those are all hand drawn, but they're composited, you know, I guess from a, in a digital way. Do you have a name for this character? I don't. Main ancestor. It's the main ancestor. Is Can we order what? a new stylus? Sure. This is driving me nuts. I still wonder if there will if there will ever be a Trinity Planet and or Atlantis live action. No, uh, I would. No, doubt it. But it would definitely be a lot more welcome than than the golden the the Renaissance age, which because those are classics to the point they shouldn't even be touched. Well, listen to you. Just saying. I've been wondering this for a while. Um, I draw sometimes. Currently, I'm studying human anatomy. Is there or should there be a time I limit myself for study? Or should I set a time limit? Um, I don't know that you set a time limit. It's just whatever you feel. Really. I mean, I've, I've been known to sit in there for go at it for six hours you know and and or 12 hours or 15 hours i've or an hour or an hour 30 minutes <laughs> yeah Beautiful. i mean this is my first first image i've done of the year i haven't done anything this year do you think it's okay to create create art just for yourself and not post it anywhere <laughs> yes that's such a funny question that's such a uh a modern question that's funny yeah no absolutely you don't have to do art for you don't have to do art for other people in fact if you're doing it intentionally for other people it's probably the wrong reason do it for yourself first exactly no 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 it's for it's for the people first everyone knows that. It's for the people <laughs> first. 
Dustin, did you watch Watership Down with your dad? Um, Watership Down. No, you've never seen Watership Down. You didn't want to traumatize him. No, I didn't. Which one's that one? It's the rabbits. Oh. That, that basically, all kill each other. I've heard many things about it. I've seen clips of it, and uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely looks interesting. What did you think of the live action Mulan movie? Personally, I disliked it or thought it was terrible. I, should say. I didn't. Uh, are you 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 or no, person? A question on YouTube. Sorry. Um, I I wasn't crazy about. it. Uh, I have not seen it, and I was I was super excited about it. Um, just having worked on it, I really wanted to like it. Um, uh, but I, no, I just wasn't I wasn't too crazy about it. I didn't hate it. Just to me, they seem to make weird choices. Like to me, it's the movie that if most, gonna, it yeah. most lends itself to live action. And I'm not saying you got to. Bring back the complete comedy factor, but how do you eliminate Mushu? Like well, it's... well, that's the thing. If you're taking a film that was six, as successfully as successful as it was, and successfully um, critically acclaimed, I should say, um, why are you going to change it as much as you did, and why remake it at all? You know, and yeah, which is why more. they did Lion King. Um, I don't know. It goes back to why are they doing any of it, but. I mean, I, I feel like if you got something new to say, that's great. But, yeah, to go in and some of those changes just really felt random. It's like and, change for change sake. You have yeah. to differentiate it, but then you're also trying to ride the coattails of a previous success. So I... Now, the idea, the story of Mulan, you, there's an argument there but that, you know, the story of Mulan has been told many times. And, and that's, you know, if you just want to retell that story, that's great. But don't call it Disney's Mulan. Yeah, I I haven't yet seen the live action and I don't really. Oh really? You never you've never seen it? Nope, and I honestly don't intend to. In fact, I watched. Wow, you're quite the little uh, curmudgeon. Curmudgeon, yeah. I never knew you had that side of you. I'm quite. I'm. I guess you could say I'm. A... It's like you're mean. <laughs> I'm a. I'm a brat. No, I just. Well, that's true, I but that doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. I just don't like the idea of taking something that is, all, as you said, so so plain, and turning it into a live action just to introduce it, quote unquote, to a new generation. Why not just let the old generation introduce a new generation to to such a massive people. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Aaron, you've said many times you would love to see a live action Brother Bear. Yeah, I think it would lend itself to a, a, a live action film pretty cool. And that's coming from the director of the other movie. Yeah. You're probably right. I thought the live action Jungle Book, like I said before, was great. In fact, I actually prefer it to the cartoon. The real, real question is, because I, I honestly don't remember. You remember. You remember. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, for any of these live action versions, were, were any of the original directors or uh, no. writers involved in any of the live action? Not that I know of. But I, I'm. Well, there was a little bit of a dispute about that even early on, too. I know the writer of Aladdin made a big. Uh, there's a big, I don't know if they ended up settling or if a kerfuffle? Sued, a kerfuffle, yeah. Because essentially he was saying, oh, it's kind of weird seeing a trailer use the dialogue that I wrote 25 years ago, word for word. Yeah. And I'm not getting paid for it again. You know, so there is an interesting conversation. There's about that. that. You know. Uh, it's kind of, you know, it's definitely a touchy area yeah yeah i mean the real reason and we all know why they make those movies and it's money it's of course yeah. but i mean They're that's making... the thing people have a hard time accepting with disney disney is a company that's in the business of making money they have stock they have 
shareholders. shareholders of that stock. And it's their job to increase the value of that stock. And so they got to make guesses and create what they think might do it. I just missed the, um, I missed the old fashioned two. two like, we all do. But see, like, that's the thing. You miss it, but you can go, you can, those movies didn't go away. They're still well, they available. Didn't, they didn't go away. You just wish there were, there were more. Like, I'm still making them. Yeah, like Klaus, uh, Klaus was probably the most recent 2D animation film. No, Wolf Walkers. Well, well there's that. And, there's tons. Uh, you know. But Disney's just turning way too generic. Yeah, I think I, it's... <laughs> like, with... During, during the Renaissance, like, there were such unique designs in the in the sets and the backgrounds and the character designs and all this and that. But but then they got went to CG and there's Moana and Frozen and the newest Encanto, which don't get me wrong, are amazing stories, but the designs of the characters and the sets are just feel the same. They to you? feel too much the same. Like Yeah, okay, well but I, I can counter that with the Zootopia. The designs are incredible and the world's incredible and there's just you know i mean it's i think it's just opinion is it the is it the human characters that are bothering you i think you're yes. just a victim of nostalgia you just like the things you liked when you were a kid and you're it's, like you think the new things aren't as good it's the human it's that what the, that the human characters like they're like something like Zootopia. i i'm all for i love the designs on that one but yeah, I just feel like with like Hunchback of Notre Dame and between like Hunchback of Notre Dame and Hercules, you can completely see different styles of yeah of lines in animation, and so you feel like well, and you have those thoughts of like what would it look like if Hunchback went into her the world of Hercules, and right? Things like that. But meanwhile, Encanto and between Encanto and Frozen, it's like. Oh, so in Canto, they they're traveling from they travel from Colombia to to Europe, and what do they look like? They look like they look the same. I don't think it's the I think it's the thing that Aaron has talked about a long time ago. I think things are pendulums, and I think there for a while the Disney films were start the, the when I say the Disney films, the class the two D Disney films were starting to feel. Repetitive. Well, I think form, yeah. I mean, Disney. Formulaic. What we forget is that Disney coming in in the '90s and creating these films based off of musical, you know, brought based off of Broadway. That we think that that's that was always Disney. That wasn't always Disney. That was a new thing. Yeah. And they stuck with that formula for 15 years, 20 years, and that's I think that's what happened is that it starts getting. And I think I think we're starting to feel that cycle. Now with the material that's being created, yeah, um, I think I think it, what's happened now is you show kids the two D films and they love them because they've grown up with nothing but three D, so it feels fresh again. And right. I think and I think Disney is smart enough to recognize that. I mean, it's it's gonna, you know, yeah, they they need that they need that new inspirational spark. They need a, they need that new generation of two D to come. They're going to hear all this and go, let's make another live action adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to do all of the above. I mean, that's the thing. They're going to keep doing whatever makes money. You know, so I, I, I think if they feel that that take all of this. CGI is getting stale and 2Ds are going to, they're going to, you know, if if they make a 2D film and it makes a billion dollars like Frozen, then you can bet anything that they will start cranking out 2d films you know somebody on here is talking about leica i love leica and they make amazing original films and it's stop motion but their films barely break even you know and it's, yeah it's kind of a shame because their films are incredible you know now for me what kind of uh, movie would you like to see animated a specific story or otherwise. 
Say that again. Of what kind of movie would would you like to see animated? Or if it's a specific story or otherwise. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've still got there's movies that I've started that I mean that I I still want to see done. King of the Elves, I still want to see done in some way, shape, or form. Um, I'm not sure how, but is there any wisdom you can? This is a YouTube question. Is there any wisdom you can share about zooming when painting digitally? I've noticed that it seems like experienced artists tend to zoom in less. Like you don't typically zoom hyper in and get. No, because I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm look, trying to look at the whole picture rather than the details. I don't get caught up in the details. Someone wants to know if stop motion costs more. It, it's not that it, I don't know that it costs more. Yeah. It's just, that's the thing. CG and 2D and stop motion, none of them really cost more or less than one another. That's kind of a... They're just gigantic labor-intensive films, no matter how you do them. And they all take, they all take time. They all require different kinds of, of materials. It's yeah. just a matter of what it is you're wanting to do and like how long the film you want it to be in. How much, how large of the staff do you need to get it done? Uh, someone so, on YouTube says, I'd love to see you try to draw Mufasa sometime. That'd be cool. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Do it again. Vedanta's here. I'm sorry. Can I move your car next? Where's that leave? No. Sorry. <laughs> Mm, We're almost done too, sorry. Oh, Oh, you can turn the TV back on. Oh, it's okay. Hello, world. Hello, world. Uh, Wouldn't you like to see uh, Atlantis, uh, see Atlantis have a live action remake and adaptation? Yeah. A whole new squirrel. Squirrel. Party, bleedy do. Uh, would you go back to Disney if they if they were to uh, restart production on King of the Elves? Oh, that's a boy. That's a good question. So if they brought back King of the Elves, if they if they asked me, yeah, I mean, that's oh boy, that's a tough one. That's a good question because yeah, man, I'd. It depends on the direction, the creative direction they want to go with it. Because I had, I had some very, very specific creative ideas about it that I wanted to do, and um, yeah, it'd be hard to go back and not fight for those. You probably have to, uh, if you did do do it, you might have to uh, move back to California in order to write. Oh, yeah, of course. Would you be willing to make that? Going back, back to, to Cali. To, to Cali. To Cali. Going back to Cali. I don't think so. No, I go back, of course. I miss all my friends out there. I need to make a movie about there eventually. Uh, would you like a Brother Bear remake in the style of The Revenant? Oh, in the style of The Revenant? Is that what they said? Yeah, would you like a Brother Bear yeah, remake? That would, that's pretty yeah, much. Yeah. That would be awesome. I'd like, play it serious. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. They wouldn't even call it brother bear, just call it bear. 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 
Or my brother's a bear. <laughs> you want to mention our sale, Aaron? Yes. So we have got a 50% off sale going on with our with my digital painting course, uh, in, uh, learning how to digital paint in Photoshop and in Procreate. That is current for this weekend. So go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and check it out. Pretty if you much need get post. references for the for future digital art, don't, don't forget to check out my Africa Wildlife uh, pack. Pack, pack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting question. Uh, Aaron, you said that you are better at art than story. Uh, who is your dream story collaborator? Um, well, I really, I just, the, the, there's certain people I've worked with in the past that just the sheer fact that you're working together, it pulls the best out. So, and most recent is Nick working with Nick, but also oh, wor shit. working with, uh, um, I've actually found working with Dustin as well. Oh. Dustin has pulled some good stuff out. Oh well, now you anybody is, big, but... <laughs> but also, um, uh, you know, Chuck Williams. When I get together with Chuck Williams, some good stuff comes out. Um, and uh, Tim Hodge. I know you've all, always spoken really highly of Dean Dubois. Dean Dubois is. That would be the guys. top. Yeah, that would just be the top. Uh, Erica Bay said that um, next week she's going to start uh, an oil painting using all my uh, cheetah photos from the back. Awesome. Don't do it, Erica. And also says uh, loving the wrinkles in the um, in the face of uh, of your piece there. Of your piece. I'll scream down to Marshall. We get it. You're a woodworker. <laughs> uh, Julie says, uh, I, I had a chuckle. Uh, a client just called me to talk about his uh, project, and he said, I wanted to kind of have the look of Mulan's lines and style, uh, but a bit softer. I told him, well... Uh, one of Mulan's artists is on the live stream right now that I'm watching. <laughs> oh, that's bizarre. That's pretty funny. Like, well, what a kawanky day. Yeah. How cute to look. <laughs> uh, from Andy Lee, uh, uh, at this stage in your career, do you ever get mad when drawing if it's not going according to plan? Oh, yes. And I struggle all the time. Struggling a bit with this one, actually. Yeah, he's really tested out the durability of some Cintiqs. <laughs> I don't know. I can't imagine seeing you go full Hulk and just... Oh. Yanking the whole Cintiq out from the computer to see eating across the room. No. I've never done that, in no. case there's any Cintiq people listening. No. Or uh, Wacom people listening. I've never done that. The luck raise your fit. Body. Do you think is strong, stronger, a cheetah or a leopard? Leopard. A leopard is way stronger than a cheetah. A cheetah is way faster. 
yes, cheetahs have speed, but they've given and get a, in a, a, attaining that speed. They've given up strength. Kirk Michael asks, uh, Aaron, are, are you sure Marshall is not a Christmas elf? He never stops. He doesn't stop. <laughs> he just had his gallbladder taken out last week, by the way. <laughs> and then he still goes. Yeah. I need some more shelves. He makes too many for you. I know. We just put in some new shelves in here today. Aaron, do you uh do your brushes need any adjustment to work in Procreate 5 or do they work as is? I think they work as is. So here's the thing. If you get our Procreate course, his series set one brushes are included with that, and they've all been optimized for Procreate. Um, meaning you went in and adjusted them a little bit. Um, having said that, all of the brushes on the website can be imported straight into uh, Procreate. But you might have to adjust them all. Just It just has to do with they're just designed for a different program. So the, the texture and the stamp and all that will be there, but you might need to dial them into your own liking, I guess. Yeah. Is this character going to stay clean shaven or is it five o'clock? No, it's clean, clean shaven. Those don't grow up, beards are already grown. I kind of feel like this is what the first ancestor might have looked like while he was still alive. Yes, just went around and drag. Well, he could have yeah. been an opera performer, right? Yeah. I got to do some lighting effects on him in a, a second here. He, is, he doesn't, he doesn't have the ghost thing yet. No, I don't have the ghost thing yet. What yeah. is that uh, type of kind of makeup based off of? This is the Chinese thing. opera mask. Yeah. sauteing some baby artichokes when I'm done. Just random, just to let you know. How do you think Bill Call would observe this piece and uh, what kind of feedback do you think he would give? He would tell me it would it suck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that he ever gave compliments. Aaron, thanks for all the live streams and your content. What's your approach to improve on topics that you find hard? Just attacking it and, and going at it as much as you can. And uh, yeah, that's it, really. I mean, that's how you get over it. I think anything that you find difficult, the best strategy is to break it down into smaller chunks. Yeah. Uh, from Andy Lee, uh, permission to follow along for next Friday's stream, like copy learning, okay? Yeah. Why do you ask you permission? You can do that. Who's going to catch? Who would catch you anyway? Why you? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I just don't understand. Yeah, not only do you have our permission to follow along in any any stream and draw along with Aaron, we we encourage it. Yeah, I think I'm going to start. Um, this is what I, I wanted to talk to you about, Nick, but I haven't had a chance to. I'll talk to you about it now. Think about maybe twice a month doing a um, timed animal drawing, uh, like an hour, 
and we do one minute poses and two minute poses, five minute poses, 10 minute poses, whatever, and just do an hour's worth a couple times a month. What, and maybe right? use some of our video, like use, um, so nothing's uh, sitting still. It's all moving and, and talking about anatomy and how we capture, you know, gestures and that sort of thing. So yeah, that's a great idea. Thinking about doing that. Well, let's let's do it. So if you guys are interested, let me know. Uh, from Zoji, uh, hey Aaron, since you're painting an ancestor spirit, I was wondering if you're familiar with any Vietnamese traditions of ancestor worship. I'm not. I do not know. I wish I did. But they don't. Marvel Burger says, Plot twist, this is the matchmaker with different makeup on. Yes. Someone saying, Wow, Mulan really let herself go. <laughs> uh. Well, in theory, the the first ancestor should have a resemblance to Mulan, right? Yeah. People are saying they love the animal drawing idea. Oh, good. Actually, in David Coleman's new class, he does a, a whole section of animal gesture drawing from video reference. Oh, really? Yeah. How did I miss that? I don't know. Uh, we got a couple of uh, positive uh, feedback from uh, from the idea. I'd yeah. be so down for a follow-along animal drawing session. Yes, please. And Cora and Zoji says, that's a great idea, especially in the lead-up uh, top the in-person -pers gathering. You all right, sir? Uh, I can't read. Uh, this is the easier one. Kirk said, like it. <laughs> and Erica Bay says, uh, I've been up since 1 a.m., but would totally love our animal drawing sessions. And uh, Zamina says, I like you, Art. I like you, Art. I think she meant to say, I like your art. Yeah, in David's class, uh, which I posted a link to, he's got um, about three hours of animal drawing two and a half three hours and it's all in capturing the gesture you know actually that's gotten a big big positive response so i definitely think we should do it and uh to respond to the um uh vietnamese traditions uh, zonji says uh, one tradition in vietnam is to have a death day party where you invite the whole neighborhood, a place is set for the ancestor to keep them happy and prevent unwanted haunting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think that's actually a big holiday there. I've heard. For death day? Mm hmm It's like um, the Cinco de Mayo. Uh, for... What? Eric on Twitch says, anybody else think this guy would fit in well into Big Trouble in Little China? Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It's probably one of Kurt Russell's best roles. This is Jack Burton here on the Pork Chop Express. <laughs> <laughs> He's just the best, man. Give me your best shot. I can take it. I man, it. it is hard to beat 80s Kurt Russell. <laughs> it is. It's all in the reflexes. I wish he had done more films like Big Trouble. I know you can't recreate it, but yeah. just that comedic action thing. Yeah. Well, some of it, like, there were other ones that were just so campy, like Snake Plissken. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Escape from New York. Snake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Snake Plissken. I heard you were dead. That's also John Carpenter, though. Yeah. Oh, did John Carpenter do Big Trouble? Yeah. I didn't know that. Pretty sure. 
All right, let me wrap this up. I'm having a brain fart. Oh, no, I, he definitely didn't. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm big trouble with China. Yeah. Uh, Zumpy is saying to you, Nick, uh, the party in Vietnam I mentioned is on the anniversary every year of the individual, uh, for the individual who died. Ah. Yeah, it is a John Carpenter movie, by the way. So they did at least three movies together then. Because he did... Big Trouble in Little China with John Carpenter. He did uh, Escape from New York. And well, and I don't know if John Carpenter directed Escape from LA. I'm assuming he did, so that would be the second one. That was John Carpenter, yeah. And then he also did uh, uh, The Thing. Oh, shoot, that's oh. right. And Kurt Russell's in all of those. That's what I was saying, yeah. yeah. That's like that's like his Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Burton the keeps using Johnny Depp. Tim Burton. Burton. Oh, Tim Burton. Yeah. <laughs> Someone Bruce. says your art is amazing. You should consider working for Disney. <laughs> Been there, done that. There's obviously somebody that doesn't know you, which is totally fine. Uh, thanks well, for tuning in. Uh, for those that don't know, Aaron was with Disney for 21 years, uh, and he directed Brother Bear, animated on The Lion King, animated The Beast and Beauty and the Beast with Glenn Keane, uh, Pocahontas, yeah. Aladdin, Mulan. This image is actually an update of a character sketch that he did during Mulan. This is the first ancestor ghost. Cora says, one more thing. You should tape it. Not there yet. But have you saved yet? Oh, save it. Oh, yeah. no, I haven't saved it yet. It's clear to think that that's your one more thing is saving it. Yeah. Trying to figure out, I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to go a little, a little bit of uh, 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 and a little bit of uh, 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 from Andy Lee, what's the hardest animal for you to illustrate? There we go. How do you like that? How do you like them uh... apples? Um, uh, humans, yeah, humans aren't, humans aren't easy. I'll tell you. There we go. There's something there. There we go. There's something there. There's something there that wasn't there before. Let's see. I'm going to try something else. This little some some. Uh, maybe Lee, Dustin, do you ever draw just cause? Um, I haven't drawn in six, seven years. Um, I have taken photos just cause. <laughs> I think they're just saying of just your cousin, like you're just just your cause. Just cause, just because. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe a spiritual tattoo on his wrist. 
What entails a spiritual cat tattoo? I don't know, some, something uh, on the rip that looks something spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. We're getting somewhere. You know, very straightforward. straightforward. <laughs> you know, very literal. The word spiritual is not a tattoo. <laughs> On the just write spirit on the wrist. What is that? Oh, it's my spirit tattoo. <laughs> Riders on the storm. Uh, out of curiosity, um, what would be the most complex shot you worked on during your career? Uh, most complex. I know you've mentioned the Roger Rabbit one. The Roger Rabbit one. I'm going to rule that one out. Just because you've said it before. Yeah, I mean, there's. What about Brother Bear? And I don't mean a shot you animated, but what was the most complex shot in that movie? Oh, there's there's a lot. Um, the like the spin the, around shot, right? Yeah. The glacier, the transformation sequence was really complex. Mm -hmm. Was the shot where he's telling? We're talking, Dakota. We're talking to Dakota, and I know it's like the 360 spin. Yeah, well, we built that all in 3D. I story when I storyboarded it, it was it was hard to storyboard, but um, but we uh, we built it in 3D. But what about the um, the the actual characters themselves? Was was that was it difficult to animate those? No, I mean, no harder than any other characters. But there is, I mean, there is stuff like in the Salmon Run where Keena is going down like this water chute, and we did it all in 3D, and we follow him. And uh, so it was a combination of 3D and 2D. The moose had their own complexity because... With the antlers. Yeah, the antlers were all done in CG and then redrawn over, right? Yeah. I cannot believe you totaled a... You know what we could do it would be a fun... First of all, I still insist that we do a director's commentary for Brother Barry with you and Chuck. I think I know Chuck was a producer, but I think you guys should do that. I think that'd be cool since Bob... Be here, yeah, but I think people would want to hear that. But we should do a uh, as a live stream, we should just do a friggin' Disney reunion live screen stream and get as many of your friends on as we possibly can and do it almost like a talk about old times. Oh my gosh, that's a great idea! You know, we or we could do the a brother bear reunion live, we could do each movie individually and do want. it as a zoom, yeah. Well, I, I love that idea. Oh, what's the guy's name? He uh. Uh, he voiced Olaf in Frozen. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, I can't remember. Because he did, uh, he did something similar to that with uh, Reunited in the Park. Yeah, yeah. I just mean, yeah, same idea. Yeah, same concept, just with the animation. Yeah. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, from Martin Berger, have you seen the video of a man from Mongolia throat singing? Yes. Reminds me a bit of this character. Ah, but yeah, my I think my favorite of uh, hearing Mongolian pro singing is from uh, the Mongolian metal band Who. Yeah, it's spelled H U. Oh yeah, yeah, they're great. Yeah. But... Yep. Some people are saying you absolutely need to do a director's commentary on Brother Bear. Absolutely. <sighs> the whole reason we did it is because you know, I just find them pretentious. I know, but we can do it on YouTube now, and you can get over yourself. Erica Bain said, yes, 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 thank you. <laughs> I, I actually mean, love... the genius. I, I know you think they're pretentious. I absolutely love them. I, I watch them all the time. Uh, the Director's commentaries. I think uh, they're. it's really cool to hear the thought process behind a movie. You know, what you're thinking about this shot. Plus, Aaron, you're great about... Anecdotes and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can let Chuck do most of the talk. There you go. And Mandy, uh, Lee's asking if uh, all these live streams are uh, going to be uploaded onto YouTube for later. They're yeah. they're all on YouTube. Yep. They're always on our YouTube and our Facebook because those two automatically archive them. They're usually up on our Twitch when I remember to go through and make highlights out of them, but that. The fact that that just didn't just do that automatically just still drives me crazy. Um, because otherwise they expire after two weeks, which is so weird. 
the expert. Uh, Zoki makes a point thing that this live stream is really a director's commentary in a way. It's cool. That'd be the easiest way in the world to do it, Aaron. What's that? We'll just do it as a live stream, but mute the movie. <laughs> and you have go. you and Chuck talk and let people watch the commentary live. <laughs> well, could, doing that could possibly make make it get flagged no mute the movie Could mute it yeah but can you can't also get taken down for just showing it even even without sound yeah we just show like we pause the movie show stills i don't know i've got ways to do it not as a live stream fine it was a freaking naysayer don't shoot down the idea before it's happened You're supposed to say, yeah, and? Hey, Aaron, do you know any colorblind animators? Uh, yes. Your brother is, right? Yep, Travis Blaze. Is he the only one? I think you've mentioned some other people too, right? Um, yeah, I can't remember who. There, yeah, there we go. There we go. I want to try something. Martin Berger says, Aaron could redraw the entire movie and then comment on it. <laughs> Stay out of my territory. <laughs> Beat you to it. Stay out of my territory. <laughs> uh, Aaron, have you seen a lot of rotoscoping be used in movies during your career? Not, well, no more than what? No more than usual. But, I mean, yeah. But no, I can't think of. I mean, we all use live action reference. I wouldn't no, say that's different than wrote it. No, I know. But I'm just saying, you know, we haven't. I, we no, we don't. We not a whole lot, but it's out there. I can't think of any. Tell me what you think. So I'm trying to get the, give it this kind of soft feel. Let me jump around because I'm watching it on the ladder. So. So there's that look. Or that look? Uh, that look? It's too blurry. Or that look? It's too blurry with that one. It is. I actually it? just, I was funny because I was just watching it and I thought the camera was out of focus. I was, <laughs> I was like, did the screen capture go out of focus? No. I was just trying something. What if you, what if you made just like from the forearm up somewhat um, blurred to make it look like it was out of the field? You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Vern? They, they know what I mean? Yeah. Just find something else here. You know what I mean, Vern? Trying one more thing? One more thing. One more thing. It's your thing. It's one more thing. Do what you want to do. You do what we got to do. <laughs> Is there any chance, Aaron, you can bring the size of this up a little bit? How's that? I'm waiting for the lag. There we go. Perfect. You start with the circle, then animate the rest. Easy. 
Jose Oliver on YouTube says, greetings everyone from Nebraska. It's very cold here. Thank you for your professionalism and the joy in teaching us. Such beautiful art for our growth and what we love. I am happy. I'm glad you are happy. And I thought I was thinking too, Jeremy. Uh, uh, we're thinking, what about like when you're taking a photo, uh, or out the arm and stick? A little have a focus on the figure. I kind of like the arm and the stick. Hmm? I don't want to blow out the arm and the stick. I kind of like it. You don't have to blur it out entirely. Just have it where you had it before, but just erase no, I know. the blur from, from the figure itself. I'll give them a little blur on there. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. What you wanna do. There. Trying to give him a little bit of a What's it called when the light goes into the skin and comes back out? Uh, oh, no idea. Nick? What's that? What's it called when the light goes into the, shines into the skin and then comes back out? Oh. It's a, uh. I actually don't, I know what the, I know the phenomenon, but I don't know what the. the yeah, what's it called they, when it, when they do that in CG, it's called, it's called something. Oh, I know what I'm going to try. I know what I'm going to try, guys. What are you going to do? <laughs> hold on. Just hold on. Oh, Zundi says uh, it's called subsurface scatter. Thank you. Thank you, my man. I always know I could rely on Zundi. Shoot, that's not what I wanted. Don't get it. Yeah, What do you think? I think that's too much. We get some of these off the pad. Funny, I'm over on Twitch. People are like, subsurface scattering, subsurface scattering, subsurface scattering. <laughs> and then someone's, someone typed, ah, the sound of hundreds of nerds furiously typing at their keyboards to get the answer first. <laughs> <laughs> that's from LC2500 on Twitch. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Forget. Forget. Oh, I like the motion blur. Aaron. You like that? That's what yeah. I was wondering. Yeah. The radial motion blur. The, work, the, yeah. light, the light rays. What if I did that with him? Oh, Maybe. so hey, Aaron. What? Um, I know we've talked about it before, and. Why don't we like on a on a few on a live stream very soon? Why don't we just do tilt brush? Because I have the Oculus. Dustin has the Oculus. Oh, that'd be fun. I played around with it the other day, and I had so much fun in there. 
drawing yeah. and painting. I found that the icing brush was the best. Like the it's icing like, brush? It's like cake icing. Oh, that's cool. But you can build it up. Like, you know, to get volume. Yeah, yeah. I like it. All right, let's try one more thing. Ooh, I just said it. One more thing. I want to try something. Like one more thing, man. I want to try something. Now let's go back to here. I thought it was going to do something different, but it didn't. Uh, from Matthew Gilligan, uh, would you consider making animation flip books of the little animation clips you release on social media? That's a cool idea. What did I say? Doing little animation flip books of the little clips that we release, release on social oh, media. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting the money together to do it. Printing them, yeah. There it is. There we go. I like it. You got to show the uh, before and after with the line drawing at the end. Here's one, something I want you to see for you young kids out there that sign and your signature takes up one third of the, the image oh. area. Don't do that. Oh. <laughs> I, I've seen so many. <laughs> Make so your many signature blend in with the image. So there's my signature. It's only like a two steps value-wise lighter than the background, and it blends in when we back out. You don't want your eye to go to your signature. You want your eye to go to... The image. The image. I I've seen quite a quite a few professional photographers look through different photos in, in review, and they would come across the picture where like one third of the image is the subject, yeah, and then the other third is the signature, <laughs> just as big as that subject itself. It was like, why? Bruh. <laughs> it's like. If you're going to put a signature, like you said, make it nice and small, put it in the corner. There's, there's no right. need to stamp it on the face of your portrait. We're going into uh, live stream images, right? Yeah. In fact, I've, I've hardly even uh, applied a signature. On Mia says... Why even draw a picture if your signature isn't going to take up three quarters of it? <laughs> <laughs> What's the point in it? That's What's funny. What's the point in drawing? The drawing is just an excuse for the signature. <laughs> I, I really want to sign a signature so bad. Let me draw, let me draw for it so I can sign it. Zora would disagree with you. <laughs> Mm. 
All right. Trying to find. There it is. That's where we started. Right there. Something about that I like better. <laughs> and uh, there's where we ended up. Boop. 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 Love it. Love it. So. And again, for those people there. that joined late, this is uh, the, the pencil drawing is... Uh, early sketch that Aaron did for the first ancestor ghost in Mulan. Aaron did all the ghosts in that movie, uh, yeah. as well as Yao. And so uh, he was like, he, he stumbled across the sketches and said, you know what? I like that. I'm going to finish it out as a digital drawing. There you go. So there's our our ancestor from Mulan. He got he got a little bit rounded out, especially along the left side of his face, mm -hmm. the screen left. I, I, I lost that kind of chiseled Hard edge. edge. Yeah. But anyway, it was still fun. Yeah. So I like the pattern on his robe. Thanks. There it is. I gave him the big earlobes that he eventually had in the uh in the movie. Ooh, nice. Oh nice. Yes, I can see that. It took those the little ones there. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me blow them up there. There he is. And uh, that was fun to draw. It was fun to paint. It was something a little different. And uh, I'm going to go and um, enjoy the rest of my Friday night. What are you guys going to do? Uh, probably my usual. Video oh, games, Dustin? Video games. <laughs> awesome. Been, in play been playing a, a new game factory called Hell Let Loose. It's a World War II game. And it is awesome. So, cool. I'm going to go um, alphabetically organize my CD collection. Nice. Uh, but uh, both by year and alphabize, alphabetize. So, alphabetize. you know, it would be 1970 A through Z, <laughs> you know, 71 A through Z. Sounds tedious, but cool. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Remember, we got a sale going on over at creatureartteacher.com. We've got 50% off our digital painting course with Photoshop and Procreate. Those are two different courses, and they're very thorough. Uh, check them out because I, I enjoyed making them, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something. If you want to learn some digital painting and if you like some of the techniques that I use today, then go on over and check those courses out because you'll be able to learn from them get a lot more information in depth absolutely They're great yeah courses. and stick around because like i said you know we'll probably i think we will start doing some of those timed animal courses we'll do that in the coming weeks i'll try to schedule that uh we've got a, we've got more courses coming up we've got my animation course coming up um so we've got some pretty exciting fun stuff that uh we're really you know kind of chomping at the bit to get out to you guys so hopefully soon very, yeah, very soon. and please uh, share these videos and help us spread the word because that helps us out a lot. Yeah, subscribe. The word. Please subscribe. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Go on out there, put some beauty back into the world. Remember, you're artists, and it's our job to do that. So at least make people think about things a little differently. So go on out there, have a great weekend. Be, have a safe weekend, and we will talk to you next week. Bye. Cowboy Bebop. Bye, everybody.